All right, so I, I will have to, to, I will want to leave now um, with, uh, with our final, probably final question to all, to all of the participants that we are, that we are having. And um, if I would have to ask you, which is the, your main priority interest um, of your main curiosity of research that you are having in your project regarding the digital twins, could you share that with us in, 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 one, in one sentence? Because this could be probably a very nice approach for all the public servants to understand where are the current challenges, where are the current areas of of work, so I would like to to start uh, well to follow the the um, the list that we have, and I'm probably starting with uh, with Sophie. Uh, Sophie, could we, if you will have to tell which is your priority now or your main interest in the field of the digital twins, what would you say? Well, since the all digital twins uh, are essentially built on a data space, uh, my my interest is in data spaces because it's important that the data the data space will hold data sets that are trustworthy and that are useful and that they have an added value for for the use cases. And uh, it's not only that uh, that they are eligible for the use of an urban digital twin, but also that the the users of the digital twin are able to assess the data sets as well because um especially if you are in a public administration um and you base a decision on a simulation i don't think it's it's in our experience in all the studies that we conducted it's not sufficient for a public uh, servant to say like that i base my decision on simulation because this is what the simulation said they also need to be able to assess the data that uh, led to that uh, simulation. So um, th I, thank, I you, thank you very much. So, th thank you very much. I, I, so we are very happy because you know that we are going to have our next uh, uh, training action, mutual learning action in data spaces. So we will be very much welcome to, to have you again. So no, don't go too far away. Sophie, thank you very much. Um, the second, uh, Hugo, uh, what would you think that will be your your next uh, challenge uh, related to the digital twins? I, I think what we see now is a lot uh, of these environments are driven by uh, smart mobility uh, that we see also in our actual uh, use cases. Uh, as I already said, in the next project, we are going to more in depth uh, what concerns air pollution, what is also an important issue. But I think um, um, cities and city managers have a lot more to a, a much bigger demand, and it has to, to come from, from them. To, to build much more use cases than we can imagine for the moment. So that the use of digital twin goes, uh, and once again, digital twin as a, uh, a decision making and a decision helping tool um, can go much broader than only mobility and, and air pollution where we're working on uh, at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I think that this is an open invitation also for the public servants to provide their case studies Hola. in the case of use in order. And mail Definitely. Me. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Looking forward to collaborate on that. So, uh, Antonio, uh, how do you perceive um, uh, this approach? Uh, which is your next uh, challenge when we are talking about uh, Carla, and uh, when we are talking about developing this concept of digital twin for the autonomous car. Well, there, there are many, and uh, the next for us is depending on the sponsors always. So uh, I would say that since our, all our sponsors are from the US, maybe uh, having some sponsors from Europe could be nice, you know, because I know that there are many companies around Europe using Carla. So um, aside of that, I would say that uh, there are some questions that are critical and we don't have bandwidth so far to tackle, like more 
accurate sensor modeling, like uh, when you go beyond cameras, for instance, you go for radar or LIDAR things. And also it could be awesome to have a sort of open source MIT license or whatever is called in art, mm -hmm. a market of textures, materials, 3D assets, all this, so that anyone uh, can use it without any restriction. And then uh, this would be great because it takes a lot of time to do it. Okay, so this open market of digital assets is an infrastructure needed for the, for the European market as well. And yes, we are talking always about the European paradox, but it is true that if uh, the, the real investment is coming from other ecosystems, we cannot expect to, to overcome the, the European paradox. So I welcome your invitation to the European companies and institutions to support the European made uh, innovation. Um, Giuseppe, um, from Greece, uh, what do you think that it is Thessaloniki's next challenge in the context of uh, the digital twin approach for mobility that you are developing together also with the European network of living labs? Yeah, I think that uh, a main challenge, not only from Thessaloniki and uh, trying to not talk about technical issues, is that uh, to engage the ecosystem. So because Digital Twin is about a city, is about uh, some stakeholders that are uh, in it, and uh, you, you need them on your side. Uh, the, the, the simplest way, you know, the simplest uh, need is the data. So to engage the ecosystem, the living lab participants, the whole city in building the Digital Twin and being part of it and in adopting it as, as their own project. Mm. Thank you very much. This uh, this holistic approach, systemic approach, right, to the development of of the of the city as a as a as a living lab and uh, and its vi virtual twin. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution, Josep. And last but not least, uh, Jose Luis, how do you perceive from the best country um, these challenges? Which are your following challenges? Your next steps or the thing that you would like to tackle? after a summer well-deserved rest? <laughs> yeah, I think the, that uh, we, we, we have been talking and I think that the, it's crucial, the, the data. The, the data is uh, element crucial for the, for the digital twin. And I think we, we need to go a step forward in the data availability, in the interoperability, in the way of linking data uh, and, and it's also, I think it's a, it's, it's a key step for replicability, for extensibility and so on. I think that the, the basic element for the digital twin are the data and we need to, to, to go uh, further, further on, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jose Luis. Definitely, the, this data approach has been repeated during all the conference, and uh, this is something that we have to tackle together and to understand how to share it and which are the model of shared governance in order to allow it to flux uh, freely. And uh, we think we will have the time to do it, but now it's the time to, of closing this, uh, this workshop. I want to thank you very much for all the attendees. I want to thank you very much also to all those that are online uh, participating. Uh, thank you, uh, Hugo, Antonio, Josep Maria, Sophie, jo Jose Luis, and a, a warm thank you also for Claudia who couldn't be with us uh, today. Now it's the moment of, we have seen, uh, we, have, we have been listening to very interesting stories, stories about digital twins. And now it is your moment, it's a moment of the people that are watching this video, that are watching this workshop in order to contribute with their own digital stories. We need to understand more and we need to share within the website, within the platform, the different regions in order to start this community of mutual learning. We will, you will have all the materials available together with the bibliographic references, with more training materials. And we would like this to be the beginning of, uh, of us as uh, Jose Luis was mentioning, to understand better is the best starting point. 
So thank you very much and enjoy the afternoon. Goodbye.